welcome back all of you to the next day session on uh, ebus order management and then uh, we are into advanced pricing and then we are continuing our advanced pricing so let me go inside and then what happens i'll show on the screen now now we were now continuing on our modifiers actually and then uh, what happens uh, we are now going to go for the final set of modifiers i will now go there click on get modifiers so we are now into the final uh, modifier now go down <clears throat> so we have completed the what happens discount list we have come to the promotions the d is just nothing but a, what happens uh, yeah. uh, this is for promotions for b2c actually the d is for b2b the surcharge is a lab exercise for you and then we are now going to go for the freights and special charges the last one and go there i will now make as what c1 underscore uh, what happens a name a for a g h t freight one and then you take a copy of it and then what are we are allowed it c1 underscore f1 is the one i'm not giving it and then i will now give again and this qualify click on the list qualify then i'm going to give it now <clears throat> so list qualifier are not is coming what happens it means that there is no qualifier at all fine click on okay and then now not get a qualifier it is customer <clears throat> and then give it up so it's a customer it's customer name customer name is the one <clears throat> sorry see you customer name and then go there always have the habit of giving the appropriate qualifiers otherwise what happens it will get applied everywhere now c1 plus which in your back that will be going so now it is applicable only for this customer so give a list qualifier and then here go to the modifier number 1 now <clears throat> and then go there put the levels now so control here and you see line level control here here we have got only one modifier type the modifier type is only one you go there make it as automatic and then go there Pricing phase control L. I will say LLA. Go there. And then here, what happens? Product attribute is item number. Item number. And then it is a C1 percentage of one. And then you would have what else? Go there. <coughs> now, the freights and special charges will now exactly work like a surcharge actually. The price and special charges will be working like a surcharge. You go there. Volume type is what? Item quality. And then the break take this point, and then go there. It's each now, and then the value is what what happens? It will now start at zero and then end at certain value. Fine, boss. So it will now behave like a surcharge only. So it will now begin at a zero value and then end at five actually. Fine, boss. So zero to five it is applicable. Then go there. Click on the discount special charges here. I will say what happens. I will now go and say let us say <coughs> it is an Uh, transportation fee or installation fee. I'm going to make it as installation fee. You go for that, and then application method is percentage now. I click on it and then make it as a percentage, and then it's ten percent. So your ten percent installation fee is applicable for quantities up to five. Fine for quantities up to five is applicable. Fine, I made it automatic. Up to five quantities is applicable. So we're going to make a test of it now. Fine. So before we do what happens, let's see whether whether all of the things are basically uh, what happens. Uh, Disabled or not? Fine. Go there. I don't go and query it. No, fine. Go there query. It is a C percentage. Let me query. You see whether everything is disabled or not. C one discount one is not inactive. Fine. Down arrow. Freight is there. C one prom one. I will not disable it. No. I will not disable it. So that what happens? It doesn't apply at all. <clears throat> so promotion one is not disabled as well as what happens? You are discount one is disabled. Only freight is only thing which is disabled. Go there. Now let us open up a sales order, and then test this one. Double click on it, and then I will now put the customer over here now, and then you tap, and then you go to others. It's okay, fine. Go there. Go to the line items now. <clears throat> C one percentage, and then you tap, and go there. Go for one quantity, and then you tap. So a ten percent freight is now applicable for this. Fine. Click on commit. Control S commit. So you can now see what happens. The line total is just ten only. In case of surcharge, what happens? The item's unit price will be eleven dollars. But in case in case of a, what happens, your freight and special charges, item's unit price is not incremented. But what happens? The order total has now become eleven. The order total will become. Fine. You go to go to actions, and then here what happens? You go and then see the charges. Now. So actions and charges, you cannot see. Fine. In this case, what happens? You cannot see. An installation fee of ten percent is not done. Fine. Come on. Come on. Come in here. Charges. Uh, Okay, so again, now go to the order level, the main region. Go to the actions. 
and then mode of whatever charges. So here also is not there. The line number it has to be there. <clears throat> All actions, and then sorry, not charges. Go to charges and freight cost actually. It is, it is wrongly commented. It didn't came properly. So actions, charges, and freight cost. If you see what happens, you will see an installation fee of what happens. Ten percent has been applied. So, is a charges and say first cost. So ten percent has been applied upon. So it orders. And then the moment you buy more than five, what happens? The installation fee is waived off. Go there. Go for six quantities. Then give a tab and then commit. So if you give a tab, what happens? It's not sixty, but the total cost is sixty-one. But if you commit it, what happens? The ten percent will not go. Go, go away. Gone. Mine is gone. Go to actions and then go to view adjustments. Now have a look at it now. Not view adjustments, sorry. They go to actions and then go to charges and write cost. And orders. Go there. The installation fee is no more there. So this is on line level charges. Fine line level freight charges. Now we'll not go for order level charge. And go there. Click on it. Number two. Go there. I have no go and then put it on the order level charge. And the order level charge. So we are not choosing the order level charge. And go there. It is again a fraction of charges. So if I now make it as automatic, and then go further now. So if it is the order level charge, what happens? Control L. It is the ALA only. And LLA is no more applicable. ALA is only applicable. And go there. And then here, what happens? You go there and says, no, you cannot put any item number at all. Item number cannot be put if it is an order level charge. Right? Nothing can be put on that. And no level entries can be the order level charge. Fine, go there. And then nothing can be done here. And here, no quantities, nothing will be coming. Go to the discounts and charges area. And then here, what happens? You roll down. I will not say what happens. It is a transportation charge. Order level will be a transportation charge. And then since it is an order level, percentage is not applicable at all. Fine, you can have only lump sum. So lump sum of let us say two point five dollars and you get. So at the order level, what happens? We can have the application method only as lump sum since it is order level freight and special charges. Some people have come in and there's no that. And is there? So there's no that. Now we go and then do it now. Fine. Go for one quantity now. One quantity and then give it up. The moment you commit it, what happens? The line level charges as well as order level charges are both are applicable. Fine. Come let's commit. No, I think I'm not seeing. What happens? It has now become thirteen point five. So if you go to actions and then go to what happens? Charges and freight cost. Go and then have a look at it. So we have an installation fee of ten percent. Apart from that, at the order level also we have a charge. Right? We go to the order information and then here in the order level, what happens? You go to actions and then go to charges. In the order level, you go to actions and charges. Now you can see what happens. The transportation charge of a lump sum fee of two point five is applicable. Right? So it's order level charge. So go there. And now the moment you increase the line quantity to more than five. What happens? The line level charge is no more applicable. Fine, let's commit. Now it has become sixty-two point five. If you go to actions and then go to, and then have a look at the charges and freight cost, you won't find anything. Fine, कुछ नहीं यहाँ पर. Fine, click on close. And then you go to the order header. And then here you go to actions and then go to charges. Now, and then you can now see what happens. The order level charge of two point five is applicable. So this completes freights and special charges at line level as well as order level. Fine. The freight and special charges at line level and order level. But what happens? There is one a big concept called what cost to charge conversion. There is a very big concept, and then what happens? Only few industries are using it now. But I have never tested it. I have a document on this now. Fine, go there. I will not show you a document on this now. <coughs> you see, when docs cost to charge conversion day two, it's called freight and special charges white paper. So on day two, OM day two, we have one document called Freights and Special Charges uh, White Paper. So double click on it, and then here you can now see this now. Fine, it has been written way back, very long time back. So this is the time when uh, girls were wearing only sarees actually. Fine, it is written a long time back actually. Beautifully written actually. Fine, it is called what happens? Uh, converting the cost to charge actually, cost to charge conversion. How to do it? And the big document, so around there. Uh, 36 page document actually you go through this and then you can even configure it on your own fine everything is fully explained so the executive summary is also there and then afterwards what happens it shows you everything on how the process flows and then they have no given the demonstration with the what happens examples also they have taken one complete example and then they have done it down and then they want the screenshots also <clears throat> so you do it if you feel like uh, using it cost to charge conversion is a very good example it is applicable in even now also Some companies are using the cost to charge conversion. It is now completely written there. You try to set it up. It will take around two to three hours for you to read and then set it up fine for the family. Fine. Try to do this now. So this is on cost to charge conversion. Now, what happens? Uh, this advanced pricing has been extended into purchasing also. We'll not go on and say this now. Fine. Let us not go on and uh, no inactivate it now. Inactivate it and then save it now. 
that no sale so it's not inaccurate so let us go and then see that what's called this advanced pricing has been introduced in purchasing also so there is a document go there so you have gone automatic document creation is there so if you double click and then open the document automatic document creation you are opening it up so open it up and then see there are three types of adcs are available in purchasing fine we have already seen it now fine we have seen the blanket we have seen the bid quote and now what happens we are going to see the contract now fine we are going to see the contract the contract is for advanced pricing in purchasing now fine so the third type you are going to see now here the one so we go there and then see this so for which what happens first of all these three profiles must be properly set up fine we have to set up these three profiles qp license for product must be purchasing qp pt must be procurement qp uh, ssc must be oracle purchasing so we'll go there i'll now uh, do the demonstration on the ready made one now fine so it's responsible to purchasing now so i'm going to the purchasing and then here <clears throat> what happens you go there go to edit and then go to preferences and then go to profiles so edit preferences profiles is the personal profile of a user now fine double click on it and then go to query more fine qp percentage so we'll now see the first profile now here you go there the first profile is what qp license for product must be purchasing right? it is actually advanced pricing is a license actually if the license is not bought what happens you will not be able to find out this value at all right? this value will not be available now in the qp license for product number so this is the training session what happens is available but in reality what happens you must have this license actually fine right? if the order is not purchased license you will not be able to do it now and go there so you go to qp license for product now <coughs> you can see this is the one this profile so this profile is set to purchasing now so you can enable it only when uh, what happens sir uh, there is a key there so only when you buy the by license what happens sir? we can use it for this thing advanced pricing as well as this. then qp pt must point to procurement qp pt fine go there page down <coughs> you cannot see qp pt so qp pt is no point to procurement for this responsibility for the responsibility what happens it has been already set so no need to make more here thing and then qp ssc must point to purchasing now fine pt and ssc must point to the purchasing module now and page down <clears throat> go there qp ssc we got to see now ssc is also pointed to purchasing so at the user level there is no need to override it all so these two uh, these three profiles are now perfectly set now fine now is okay now let me create an item which will be having a list price of 5.5 so we now go on and get an item of high close it now go there good items master items and now work on m1 or now right? for m1 or and then work upon so there what happens i will now create the yeah, item for what happens advanced pricing test in purchasing now so go there i will now say what happens c1 underscore adv underscore price underscore test so there is an advanced pricing test advanced price test item i go there let me apply template now and purchase template is applied so in this case what happens i am not going to give a list price now. so the list price will automatically default onto the requisitions and purchase orders fine go there i will now give a list price of let's say 5.5 now so i am now giving a list price of 5.5 and then i am going to say it so i am now creating an item so i am now going to set up advanced pricing for this item and then if advanced pricing fails what happens the system will now pick up the list price and then populate on your requisitions as well as purchase orders if advanced pricing is going to fail what happens this list price will come into the requisitions and purchase orders otherwise what happens it will be coming from advanced pricing it will be coming from advanced pricing so demonstrate it what happens i have now given a list price now <clears throat> we go there and then we are now creating the item over here on the v1r and then i will now assign it to m1r so if you go on and see this now fine here afterwards what happens there are two more steps are there and then afterwards we have to set up the adc now. the adc has to be set now. Fine. We have to set up an ADC, and then afterwards, what happens? We have to perform the setups for advanced pricing. So we will now create a new supplier for this. Now, fine. We will now create a new supplier. Go there, RT, and then go assign it. Commit. Let's commit. So by which what happens? Now assign. And remember, the item is having a list price of five point five. So C one advanced price test is now ready. Fine. Close it now, and then let us now go on and get a supplier now. Fine. Go to the supply base supplier. So let me get a supplier. So we'll now create a supplier. Click on create supplier. So let me create a new supplier for this for this exercise. <clears throat> so this is uh, for testing the advanced pricing. And so what happens? I will now create a new supplier now. <clears throat> so click on create supplier. And then supplier name is C1 underscore ADV underscore sub one advanced supplier one. And click on apply. So by which we go into the main screen now. So on the supply screen, I'm now creating a supplier now. <clears throat> So once when you apply it, what happens? It goes into the main screen. 
under that we will all go there and then you know saying that there are some matching organizations the data quality management is not throwing you some error it doesn't matter fine so possible match organization is not showing you so ignore it for a coda bonga and then say click on create new organization it does not create a new one now fine doesn't matter even if it matches not fine <clears throat> so the dqm always throws the warning message for you and then you can ignore the warning message and go ahead and create a new organization now so by creating it whatever we're not going to go there so we go into a quick update click on save on the right hand side by which whatever the quick update is now saved and then go down and then you go to the payment details and then make one of the payment as i was called a default payment so that what happens the procure to pay push will be automatic actually we'll not be having any problem at all so check is now selected and then click on save now i don't say and go there and then afterwards i go there go to the address book now and click on the address book and then let me get an address book so click on create now i'm not creating an address now So go there. It's TDR one. Fine. I will put a site one here. Site one. And then purchasing and payment has been enabled now. Fine. Go there. And then click on continue now. So once we continue, what happens? We don't throw an error now <clears throat> because what happens? So many days. The city, county, state, everything is missing now. Fine. Doesn't matter. Fine. It is not an error. It is only a warning. Fine. Click again on continue. Fine. It will now go. It is a multi-org access control in which what happens? I am not enabling this now. Fine. Mission operations is now enabled. I click on apply. So by which what happens? Your C1 advanced sub one is now created. Fine, now completed. So supply creation is now complete. So for which what happens? We are now going to make what? Year one of this now. Fine. We'll now make this thing. Supplier is ready. Fine, go there. So it's not done. <clears throat> go there and see. Fine, site has been uh, added to this now. Fine, site is now added. Fine. So here what happens? The update icon is only for the non-transactional updates, whereas the manage sense is for transactional updates. Fine, I already told you in the purchasing training. Fine. Remember it. So whenever you want to make any transactional updates, you have to go there. This is for update is for a non-transactional update. I close it now. And then click on OK. Supplier is now ready. C1 advanced sub one is ready. You go there. And then we'll now have two more setups for this now. Fine, go there. The next one is what? Auto sourcing must be enabled in the document. Type. Fine. Enable auto sourcing in the document. Type. Requisition document. Type. And go there. And then we'll now go to setups and then go to purchasing and then go to document type now. Right? Set up purchasing document type in the navigation, which what happens? I'm going to enable auto automatic sourcing now <coughs> for the requisition. So on the document type, what happens? I'll be enabling the automatic sourcing. This is required for advanced pricing and purchasing. And you go there. Here, what happens? You can now see the requisition purchase is the one for which what happens? I'm going to click on update now. I will now click on the update. So once we click on the update, what happens? We go inside now. <coughs> And then here, what happens? Use contract agreements for auto sourcing. Fine, this is required. So if this is enabled, then what happens? You are now your purchasing is set for what happens? Advanced pricing actually. Use contract agreements. I click on apply. Fine, there will be day and go there. Fine. Next is what? OU must be set for both. Uh, what happens? Uh, PO and OM also. Operating unit must be set for purchasing as well as order management module. If the operating unit is not set for order management module, what happens? It will not work at all. Advanced pricing will not work if the operating unit is not set for auto management. Fine. It must be set for both, both the modules. So the prerequisites are complete. Now what happens? We will now create the SR, ASR, ASL, and then CPA. Fine. These four combinations we are going to make a creation now. Fine. Let us now go over and create SR now. Fine. SR is a sourcing rule and go there. You go to supply base and then go to sourcing rule. Double click on it. Sourcing rule and create it. So I don't say C1 underscore SR1. Fine. Make it enabled for all organization. From date is today's date. Type is buy from. And then I'm going to buy from C1 supplier, C1 advanced supplier, and then control L is a site. Fine. It is 100 percent and then rank is one. So by which what happens? We are now completed. Creating of the sourcing rule now. Fine. So if you are going to use the sourcing rule, we are going to buy everything from this supplier. Fine. So sourcing rule is created. Then we go for the next activity of this now. Fine. It says AS or assign sourcing rules. So we'll now go there, assign sourcing rules, close it now. And then here, what happens? We go there, go to the assign sourcing rules navigation. Supply base assign sourcing rule is the navigation, which what happens? We are now going to assign the sourcing rules which we have created in the previous step now. And then insert it in over here now. And double click on it. And then here, let us now query what happens. If you see, you go to edit and then go to preferences and then go to profiles. And then here, what happens? There is a profile now. Fine. It is the MRP percentage, default percentage, so percentage, set percentage is a profile. Fine. MRP default sourcing assignment set. Fine. Go there. It points to your, what happens? Assignment set. What happens? This has to be used. Whatever is pointing to MRP default sourcing assignment set, what happens? You it and if you want, you can even override the user level, but normally nobody overrides it. They will not use this one. Fine. Supply scheduling is the one. Fine. And then query that one. Fine. Go there. Do the supply scheduling. 
worried. So supply should like, I will not make an entry over here. And keep your customer and then control down arrow. Control down arrow is for the insertion of new record. I will not make it as item level now. Here, what happens? Uh, I told you in the beginning, it's a global is more generic and then item organization is more specific. Right? So item organization, the top priority, this is a very generic one. If you don't have any assignments at these levels, then what happens? The global will be automatically right? So you know we intermediate priority and go there item and then go there. So it's a C1 percentage, ADV percentage, and then give it to the advanced price test. Control here will be having the sourcing rule as well as the bill of distribution. Bill of distribution will be used by the AACP module actually. The sourcing rule is the one which is used by purchasing and go there. And then it is C1 percentage and then give it back tap to orders and then come. So the item sourcing rule is now established. The item sourcing rule is now established. And then the sourcing rule is pointing to a supplier. So indirectly what happens, item supplier relationship is now getting established. So item points to your sourcing rule. Sourcing rule points to your supplier. And so what happens, item supplier relationships get established. Fine, close it now. It is not done. Fine, commit. Now we'll now make a check of it by making a requisition of fine. Doubt on the requisition and then we'll populate the item over here now. Fine, C1 person, the AD person is on your tab. So the moment you give the item, what happens, you cannot see the supplier inside the menu. So this is the first set, fine. So once when you completed half of this ADC of SR, ASR, I mean SR and ASR, what happens? You can test it by opening a requisition. Don't save it now, fine, God has closed it. So once when you put the item over here, automatically what happens? The supplier inside is not coming out. And close it now. Close the form and then go there. Next is what? ASL, CPA. So we had to give the ASL and CPA now, fine. ASL and CPA and go there. And now what happens? Go there, go to the approved supply list. Supply base, approved supply list, double click on it, do the navigation now. Here, what happens? We'll make entry. So if you give a control of flow one, what happens? We'll be having plenty of entries now. Hazard entries. Fine. So many entries are there. Fine. Page down. <coughs> Page down. So we'll have plenty of entries, and then now we'll now make our entry over here. Fine. Control down arrow. <coughs> and then go there. Item is what? C1 percentage. AD percentage. And then go there. Here, supplier is what? The supplier is C1. Uh, advanced right, site is this one, and then status is approved now. And then go to the record details, and then here, what happens? The global is going to be what? Yes, no, and then come in. And now, here, what happens? We have to make an entry in the attributes. So, before we make an entry into the attributes, what happens? We have to have the CPA ready now, a contract purchase agreement has to be ready now. So, we'll now go and then create the contract purchase agreement, and then insert the CPA into ASL now. The CPA has to be in the ASL. So this entry of what happens, item, and then this supplier entry is now complete. So you go to the window, and then go to the navigator now. So now let us go there, go to tools of the form, close of the form, it's not enabled, find just ensure it, and then we'll now make a purchase order. Also. Go and then make a purchase order. And then we have to make a contract purchase agreement. Robert. So a CPA is used in advanced pricing. For advanced pricing, what happens, we need a contract purchase agreement. Go there. Supplier is C1 percentage, AD percentage, and then give a tap. What else? And then everything is coming. Here, there won't be any item, fine. You will have an amount agreed. Fine, go there. And then click on the terms now. Fine. So, amount agreed and terms are very important as far as the CPA is concerned. Fine, go there. And then we can now give everything. Effective date is very important. And then normally, what happens will be for a three months period. So, I'm just giving some dates. And then remove the AL now. Fine. There should not be any limits at all. Fine. For us. The AL should not be removed. AL must be blank basically. Fine. From the amount agreed, what happens is the amount limit gets automatically auto populated. And then I'm removing it now. So, because what happens, we are now using it on the ADC and close it. And then click on approve now. Fine. 6676 is a, is a CPA created for the supplier. I click on approve. So, I'm going to approve it now. Fine. Click on OK. Fine. By which what happens? <coughs> it gets approved. Fine. So, 6676 is approved. Fine. Close it now. We will now insert the CPA into the ASL now. Fine. The CPA will be inserted in the ASL now. Fine. 6676. I'm going to insert it now. Fine. Go there. And now close it. And then go there. And then go to this place. If you keep your cursor on this level, what happens? The attribute will not come. But if you keep it at this level, at the lower level, what happens? That will be click on it. Now, fine, here, what happens? There are three types of ADCs are there. Fine. Everything has been fully explained. The BPA and then the code have been explained fully in the purchasing training. Fine. If you want, you can even have one more session on purchasing and then what happens there. Other than we have not recorded it, so we can even uh, record it and then have it for you. You can even talk to Priya and then uh, try to have one more session on purchasing also. Now we go for the contract purchase agreement. Fine, go there. Click on OK. CPA is there and click on it. So it's a 6676 is the number of fine controllers will be coming and go there. And there is no line at all on the CPA, you won't be having it. And then, since I'm not going to make any releases, what happens? There will not be any release method associated. No release method will be associated because we are not going to make any release. Fine. It is a mandate set up, fine. What is no release is not going to be there and go there and then commit. At least commit. It is not done. <clears throat> so the SR, ASR, ASL, CPA is not done. Remember, for every item, this is a repeat one. 
fine. We have to repeat it for each and every item. But these are all the generic setups for all items. Point. The first daba is basically a generic setup for all the items. Whereas this SR, ASR, ASL, CPA is, is to be is item supplier specific actually. It is item supplier specific here. Now let us go on and set up the advanced pricing for it. Advanced pricing, I'm going to set up now. So this is now completed. So we'll now go on and make a check by opening a requisition form again. Fine, open the requisition. The moment I put the item, fine, C1 percentage, AD percentage, you, give it you can now see what happens. The supplier is now getting populated. Supplier and site is now getting populated because of the SR and ASR. If you go to the source details, what happens? You can now see what happens because of the ASL, the CPA combination, the contract purchase agreement is also coming automatically. <coughs> contract by nature is global. Fine for us. So go there. And the orders. The source details is not coming. So if these two things are coming, that means what? The SR, ASR, ASL, CPA combination is not perfected. Set. Now let us go on them. Set up the advanced pricing for this one. So in the advanced pricing, what happens? I will now go on them. Create a purchase order. Now find the price list. Now find go there. So here, what happens? You go there. Go to advanced pricing. You go to what happens? The price list. And then go to the price list. Setup. So this is a navigation. Which what happens? We are now going to create a price list for us. So advanced pricing, price list, price list setup as a navigation, double click on it, and then we're going to get it. <clears throat> Go there. Here, what happens is you'll say C1 underscore ADB underscore price underscore list one. No? What else? So I'm not getting a prices. And then go there. Make the multi-currency conversion as what? As corporate price list conversion. And then go there. There's no given. And then afterwards, what happens? You go there and then click on the product and text. So product and text we get fine. Drop it down. Is item fine, drop down. And then the item number, I'm going to give it now. Fine, go there. And then here the C1 percentage, AD percentage, I'm going to give it as the item and go there. So we have tested all the basic pricing basically here, future. And then here, what happens? We will not test it for what? We go there. I will know not the price is right, but for the price break header, I'm going to test it. Fine, on it. And then here, I'll not make it as a point. No, fine, make it as a point. And then application method is unit price. So we will not test it for this combination of what? Price break header, point, and unit price. We're going to make it a stop it. Fine, you can even test for each and everything. Fine, everything is going to work now. And then apart from that, what happens? Uh, certain modifiers have also been enabled. Fine. Discount modifiers also will work. And then uh, what happens? Uh, I have tested uh, this only in a long time back. And then uh, they might have added even more and more modifiers. I'm not sure about how many modifiers are now included. But discount modifiers will definitely work. You can even make a test of it now. And then uh, click on the price breaks now. I click on the price breaks. And then here, what happens? I'm going to say, if you're going to buy from 0 to 10, <clears throat> 0 to 10, what happens? You'll be paying a price of 10 now. Fine, down arrow. And then whenever you buy from 10 to what happens to 20, what happens? You pay a price of 8 now, and then down arrow. And then when you buy from 20 to 30, fine, I'm not giving a limit now, fine. If you make it as blank, it will be infinity. But what happens, uh, just to show you an error, what happens, I'm not doing it now. Fine, come it. So this means what? The advanced pricing is now going to return back a price of 10 for a 0 to 10 quantity. And then it will now return back a price of 8 for a 10 to 20. And then it will now return back a 6 of 10 to 30. If the quantity is going to be 30, advanced pricing will fail. Advanced pricing is going to fail. And so what happens? It will now pick up from the list price. It will now pick up from the list price. List price is now 5.5. .5. So it is a test of it now. Fine. We are going to test it. Fine. Go there. <clears throat> so let us go there. Close it now. And then let us now make a test of it. Fine. Go, there. go to the window. And then go to the navigator. Now. And now open the requisition now. And then here in the item, I click on it and then I will now put C1 percentage, AD percentage and then give it up. And remember, the price list need not be entered anywhere at all. Fine. Nowhere. In the customers, we normally enter the price list. Whereas in suppliers, there is no need to enter a price list at all. So it will automatically pick up all the available price lists and then from there what happens, it will be giving you this. Right? No need to enter anywhere anything. Right? It will bring up. Whereas in order management, the price list has to be associated with the customer. And then whatever is appearing on the sales order header, what happens, it will only be applied. If that is not there, what happens, it will not be coming. So here it is not so. There is no need to associate anything to the supplier or anything like that. Fine. Just give it and then give it up. Fine. Go there. C1 percentage, AD percentage, and give it up. So the moment I put the item, what happens? You cannot see the price of 10 is coming. Fine. It is for 0 to 10. If you put 11 quantities and then give a tap, what happens? The price of 8 is coming. Fine. Go there. If you put 21 and then give a tap, what happens? The price of 6 is coming. If the requester is not putting a quantity of 31, what happens? Since advanced pricing is failing, what happens? It will not pick up from the list price and then populate on this one. This price is 5 quantities. So what happens? The requesters will be having what happens? An excellent, what happens? A, price which has been picked up from advanced pricing and so what happens the purpose of purchasing module is to reduce the spend spend reduction is the ultimate aim and so what happens the requesters will be getting the very good price on the requisition itself 
and many companies are now preferring that now, right? Because advanced pricing will be negotiated by the purchase officers, and then they'll be uh, putting the prices over there along with the discounts and other things. And then once when the requester makes a requisition, the prices gets defaulted, and so what happens? Uh, there is no further necessary for uh, the, sub, uh, the purchase officer to negotiate any further. So this is on what happens on the requisitions now, fine. So advanced pricing has been demonstrated. Let us now see on the purchase orders now. I'll now close it. I'm not saving it now. Fine. Click on OK. Now, done. Click on close. now let us go on and see the purchase orders. Double click on it on the purchase orders. Fine, go there. Click on the supplier. Supplier is C1 percentage, AD percentage. I'll give it up. Orders. And then before you populate the item, what happens? You click on go to the reference document and then put your contract number over here. Now. And click on the reference document. And then here, what happens? I'll now put 6676. Fine. The contract number I'm going to reference it now. So reference the contract over here now. The contract is reference. And then if you go to the lines, right? having put the supplier over here, go to the lines. And then I will now populate the item. Right? C1 percentage, AD percentage, and then give it a tab. So the price of 10 is coming. Right? Go there. And then if you go for 11 quantities, and then give it a tab. And the price of 8 is coming. And then if you go for 21 quantities, and then give it a tab. Price of 6 is coming. And then if you go for 31 quantities and above, what happens? It has to bring the list price, but list price is not coming here. I don't know why it's so. I will now clear the record also. I will not clear the record. Then here, what happens? I will not go there. I will not populate the item straight away for what happens? C1 percentage, AD percentage, and then give a tab. And then I will not go straight away for 31 quantities, and then give a tab. It's still not coming. <clears throat> it is not picking up the list price over here now. Fine. List price is not getting picked up. Fine. And that one, I don't know why it's so fine. Just make an RM. Apart from the table, it is working fine. Some discount modifiers have also been added over here now. Fine. So by which, what happens? You will be able to see all the six. So this completes what happens, the discussion on advanced pricing in purchasing. The remaining ones are getting automatically popular. And the only thing is the list price is not coming. The list price is not coming. Apart from what happens, the works. <coughs> so you need doubts on this advanced pricing <coughs> on purchasing. Good. <coughs> so we'll now go for the next topic. <coughs> next is what? List limits. Fine. Next is list limits. Fine. Go there. Next is list limits. And then I have forgotten to give you this document now. Fine. One document I have not given to you. Go there. This document. This just now only added this one. Fine. This is at pricing attribute management. Today I will now add it now. Fine. The next is list limits. Next topic is list limits. Fine. Double click on it. So the pricing attribute management, I'm going to go for it now. Fine. Double click on it. We're not going to discuss upon list limits. So here, what happens? Uh, uh, this is called a yearly bird offer. Fine. The first 100 customers will be given a 10% discount fine, or 25% discount. So you will be trying to attract the customers. Maybe fine. Maybe first 1,000 customers will be getting a 10% discount. Beyond which, what happens? This will not be applicable at all. Fine. Uh, so for which, what happens? Uh, we have to go via pricing manager global responsibility. So the first 10 customers or first 100 customers will be enjoying this discount. And then afterwards, what happens? The discount gets freezed. Afterwards, the discount will not be applied. So this is called the promotional limits. Fine. This is also known as yearly bird discounts. Fine. So we are going to see the promotional limits now. Hey, go there. So let me close this now. And then we are now going to see the promotional limits. <coughs> the promotional limits we are going to see now. Fine. Go there. So for which, first of all, what happens? We have to go to this responsibility. Fine. This is Oracle Pricing Manager Global. So now what happens, uh, since I have to switch back and forth between these two things, what happens, I will now introduce this uh, top menu into my menu itself. Right? So this is one. So I will now introduce the top menu of Oracle Pricing Manager Global into my responsibility and go there. I will now go to SysAdmin now. And then here I go to Security, and then go to User, and then go to Define now. And then here I will now query my, what happens, uh, your Oracle Pricing Manager Global. Right? Yes. Oracle Pricing percentage, Glow percentage. You are in user form. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm in user form. Fine. I had to go to the responsibility form. I was wondering about what is happening. Fine. It is Oracle. Sorry. I will go to F6 and F9. And then it is Oracle. Pricing percentage, manager percentage, glow percentage, code it now. Oracle Pricing Manager Global. Right? Because it's not case sensitive actually, it has to come now. So Oracle Pricing Manager Global has got what happens? The QP Pricing Manager is a top. So let me take a copy of it now. QP Pricing Manager is the one. So this one I will now introduce into my what happens? My, my order management, you know. Go there. 
So QP pricing manager, I have taken a copy. The top man of this now, or QP pricing manager, look at. I go there for it. And then I will not see what happens here. C1 puzzleage. I will not for it now. Fine. C1. So it is ADS OEM super. In ADS OEM super, now I will not introduce this menu now. Fine. Well, that's the top man for my responsibility. Go there. You go to application, and then you go to menu now. You go to application menu. Fine. Go there and then query this. Fine. It is. What happens when you query it? Go and then query on the user menu name. ADS puzzleage. Super menu. ADS. ADS super puzzleage. It is OM super. It is OM. That's <clears throat> the super menu. I go there. Down arrow. Oh God. Okay. ADS percentage. OM percentage. Super percentage. I'm going right now. So it is ADM super menu. It is OM super menu. So here, what happens? I will not introduce this now. Fine. The last. Let me introduce it now. Go there. I will not give a down arrow. So I will not make it as what? Oh God. Still coming. <clears throat> So much of a menu there. Ah. Okay, I have now introduced cost management. Now, fine. Uh, I introduced cost management over here. Now. Down arrow. I will now say 501. I will now say what happens? Nanas. Uh, what happens? I will now say it's uh, what happens? Uh, it's a it's an advanced pricing menu. Uh, it is a pricing manager. Pricing, pricing percentage underscore manager. So pricing manager is the one. I will now paste whatever I take a copy from the one else. So it is a, a pricing manager, uh, what happens, uh, top menu, fine plus to it. So by which it has been reduced now. So the request has been submitted, fine, click on it. And then there's no done. They go there. And then wait for some time and then wait for the concurrent to complete. So once it is completed, <coughs> go there and then see this now. And then compilation is now going on, fine. So once when it is completed, you can now see the new menu coming up. Fine. So the list limits we had to go on and configure on the pricing manager responsibility, or otherwise, what happens? You introduce it into your order management as an So the compilation is not happening. So once when it is completed, what happens? Very well, use it in this place now. <clears throat> Go there and then switch back to your responsibility. <clears throat> and then what happens? Have a look at it now. <clears throat> so the pricing manager has been added to your order management menu itself now. I'm now adding it to our order management menu. Go there. Switch responsibility to C1 now. Go there. One how look at the bottom it has to come now. Vandichi, we got it. And now here, what happens? I will not go there. I will now create a what happens? Yeah, what's called a price list now. In fact, double on it. Price list, price list. the navigation now. So let me create. So under the pricing manager, what happens? There is a price list and modify setups. So whenever you want to use the promotional limits, we have to set up only on the price list on, the, on this one, and not another one. And go there. Price list setup. Double click on it. And then here, what happens? I will now say. C1, fine. Promotional, what happens? Promotion, uh, what happens? Limit. I'm putting a promotion limit. I'm going to go there. Take copy weight. And then click on it. And then go there. So you go there. Click on the copy price list. Uh, I'm sorry, not this one. Not the prices. You had to go for the modifier. Sorry. You had to go for the modifier. No, I will not have to go for the modifier. Not the prices. No. I had to go for the modifier. Here, what happens? You go there. You go to pricing manager. And then go to modifiers, and then here I go to the modifier setup. Modifier setup. So the type is what I'm now putting a discount now. And go there. I will now say C1 underscore prom underscore. Let's go D1 now. So the number and name, I can even keep it same, no problem at all. Paste it. So number and name can be kept the same thing. So the list limits has to be configured now. Yeah, the list limit has to be configured. <clears throat> So here, what happens? First of all, you know, configure the modifier. Once when the modifier is configured, the list limits will be enabled. Actually, fine. Click on the list qualifier. List qualifier, don't give it now. Fine. When you are giving a list limits, what happens? Uh, with the first hundred customers will be given a what happens? Uh, this discount now. So normally, what happens? List qualifiers will not be given if list limits are going to be enabled. So the yearly bird customers actually, fine. For the first hundred customers or the first thousand customers, we are now going to give a special discount of ten percent. And then afterwards, what happens? This will now vanish. This will not work at all. And go there for the modifier. I will not go there. I will not give what yeah line level modifier. Modifier type is discount. I go there. Make it as automatic. Go further now. 
pricing fees control <coughs> LLA and the incompatibility I'm not giving it off. I go further, go further. Comparison fine, go there. Product attribute is item number. <coughs> so item number the one. Right? It is C1 percentage. I'm going to add first to sale item and go further. Volume type is item quantity. Break type is point and then go there. Unit submitter is each. Now. And then the value is from what happens if you buy more than, let us say, uh, uh, we don't say. Uh, uh, more than uh, zero to what happens? More than sorry, more than uh, ten, sorry, more than ten to infinity. <coughs> infinity. He will not be eligible for a ten percent discount. Okay, this. And then he will be eligible for a discount. For an application method is percentage, and then ten percent. This is now going to be applicable only for the first hundred customers or first thousand customers. So the moment you save it, what happens? The list limits will be open up for anything. And go there. The moment you save it, the list limits will be enabled for editing and plus commit. You can also the list limit is now. Now, in the list limits, I'm going to specify what happens. These two conditions I'm going to say. These two things I'm going to specify. So click on I will not create two lines now. Fine. I will only I will be testing it only on one of the lines basically. Fine. So one of the customer and then one of the sales orders. Fine. Only on the customer, I'm going to take it now. Fine. Not on the order level. Fine. Customer level only I'm going to check it out. So I'll now add these two things. Fine. So we can limit it by the number of customers. Fine. For one customer, what happens? Uh, what happens? You can have only two orders for which what happens will be limited. Third order on the customer, what happens? You won't be getting it. Or in total, all the orders put together. And anybody who is booking any order, what happens? First 15 orders, let us say, you are not getting a value of 15. If this, if this is not there, only one of them will be there in reality. If you're putting this on a say 15 amount is 15. So the first 15 orders of any customers will now enjoy a 10% discount. The 16th order will not enjoy it. So we'll be uh, putting it both, but what happens, I'll be testing it on the customer. We go there. So let us now configure this now. Fine, go there. Click on the list limits. So click on the list limits and we'll configure it. So the basis is usage now. The basis is usage, USC, and then give it tab. And then enforced, what happens across all transactions. The remaining, you make an R&D, fine. There are so many such things are there, fine. On the list of values, we go there and then try to make an R&D in this now. And then amount is two, so two customers only. And two customers only. And go there and then amount is a constraint one and then context one fine constraint one and go to the constraint one and then here what happens it is what happens constraint one is what qualifier attribute q u a l and then you tap qualifier attribute context one is customer now c s t there are so many such values are available here try to each do everything in context one and then afterwards attribute one is customer name now fine c s t and then you tap customer name and go there <coughs> And then go there. It is when exceeded, hard adjust the benefit amount. Right? When exceeded, what happens? Is no other things required. Right? When exceeded, hard adjust the benefit amount is not only coming. Right? So hard adjusted, hard adjust the benefit amount. So this is on the customer name. Any customer, fine. For each and every customer, for every two orders, you'll be getting it. Fine. Customer A, two orders. Third order, you'll not be getting it. Customer B, the first two orders will be getting it. The third order, you'll not be getting it. So this is not going to reduce what happens. Limit each for each and every customer. So only two orders, this discount. So I'll not go and then configure the second one now. Second one also I'm going to configure it. It's usage again. Usage and you tap. And then here what happens across all transactions. You see or and then you tap across all transactions. Here what happens? I'm going to put a value of three. This I'm not going to test it in the lab access for you. Go for that. And then go to the constraint. And then there's a qualified attribute now. Fine. Q U A L and then you tap. And go there. Here what happens the order, not a customer now. Fine. Order. And you tap order. And then go there. And then what happens is a requested date. Attribute on is a requested date. And requested date is coming. And then again, what happens is a hard, hard, hard adjustment. Go there and then control is commit. It's not showing. So here, what happens is how much is the balance available also will not show you. How much has been consumed, how much is available for us. Now, what I, for every customer, what happens is only two orders. And then this, I'm not going to test it now. I go there. In this one, I'm going to test it now. Two orders will be there. So once when everything is consumed, what happens? This entire discount list is not applicable. Go there. I have no sense. So I close it now. So you have not done it. Fine. Go there. <clears throat> so it is now configured now. Fine. Perfectly configured. So go there. Close it now. I will not test it on this one. Fine. Go there. C1 prom one D1. Go there. Go there. So we'll open up a sales order and then we'll not create a customer. Now. Fine. We'll not sales up about this. <clears throat> <coughs> sales order is going to be created for this customer now.
So open up a sales order, and then there for that you know populate a customer of C1 customer. So now a question here. Yeah. So let uh, you mentioned three orders. First three orders, we will be getting the discount of uh, some value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so let us say if we cancel one of the sales order, so the fourth sales order will be also getting the discount. No idea at all. <laughs> no, it won't have because what happens after the three sales orders are booked, what happens? The list gets freezed actually. I don't think it will allow the fourth sales order. I think I'm not sure about it. So you only have to make a test of it. No? But uh, what happens by you go through the advanced pricing manual, it now give you all the variants actually. And I'm not giving you only simple variant. I feel that it won't uh, accept at all. And that's what I think. Because the risk gets freezed. Right? You'll now see this, man. Right? Go there. First sales order, I'm going to get right. You'll now up. And then here. <coughs> you know, the particular customer, actually. Right? You'll see one for switch. And I'm going to, I'll now go for more than 10 quantities, 10, 12 quantities, and then give a commit now. Countless commit. So the list price is coming. So the moment you commit it, you got a discount. I'm right? going to actions and then go to view adjustments. You'll be getting a discount. Right? Now, one is now consumed. Right? For this customer, one sales order is now consumed. Right? This one is now consumed. So you go there. And then have a look at it now. Go there, go to the navigator now. So here, what happens? You go to the modifier setups. And then query this. <clears throat> go to query mode. Go to C1 percentage and draw percentage and then query it now. So if you go there, click on the list limits. And then you can now see what happens. Consumed is one, available is one. So the moment you consumed is zero, what happens? Available is zero. This list gets freezed actually. If you go to this level, what happens here? Consumed one is there, balance is two there because I have no conflict at the order level also. Fine. Both the things are available here. Fine. This is not going to work. This itself is going to freeze now. Fine. Because after two orders, it will be freezing. Now. So this one, now two more orders are, is available for this. Two more orders is available. Now we go there and now make one more sales order for this one. Go there. So it is not done. You go to the window and then go to the navigator now. <clears throat> uh, when you cancel the order, I don't think it will know because you see, the order was entered only. Upon entry itself, what happens? It has got consumed. Fine. In the list limits. Upon entry itself, it has got consumed. So what happens when, when you cancel it also, it will never get reversed actually. That is what I feel. I'm not sure about it. It is not even booked. So you an entered order, it gets consumed. Make a check of it. I think it will not, uh, it will not get used. Right. The moment entry, go there you got and then open up the sales order now. So you go there, C1 percentage and then you tap. And then go to the line level limits. And then here, what happens, I'm going to put the item again. C1 percentage and then go there. 15 quantities and then you tap and then commit. What happens? The second one is also consumed. Now, fine. Go to actions and then go to view adjustments and how it now. The prompt one is now applied. I go there, close it. I will not close it now. And then here, what happens? You go there and then click on the list limits now. So here, what happens? Available is zero. <clears throat> Two is consumed. Here, what happens? We have one more thing. But what happens? This is now available zero. And so what happens? The third order will never, uh, will not, the discount will not be available because what happens? The early word limit has already exceeded. And then go through the document, it will explain a lot of variants. There are so many variants around. You go through advanced pricing document, and then it will now give you plenty of variants to all the what happens there, factors over here. Now, what happens? Now, what happens? I will now go for the third order and go there. I will now go for the third order. The third order will not enjoy this content. C1 percentage will go there. And then go there. And then here, you put C1 percentage. And then go there. 17 quantities on your tab commit. You won't get the discount upon committing. Whatever you go there, go to the view adjustments. Whatever you won't get the discounts. No discount is available here right? because it's already done. We go there and then close it now. How are you going now? So click on the list limits now. In the list limits, what happens? It is consumed is too. What happens is not progressing at all. Fine. Whereas in the second line, what happens? It is also stopped. Fine. <laughs> it is not stopped updating. So it's got freezed actually. Right. It's stopped updating it. So consumed is actually now three now. Right. It has to become three and zero. But here itself, what happens is the risk limit has now become zero. It has freezed everything. You can even see the transactions here. Click on the transactions. It will show you what happens, what the transaction is, what is the price reference. There are so many such things that are available. Here. And then click on the update balance. You can even update the balance also. Something. Find that something is there. Go there, click on update balance. Oh, God, you're not allowing me because it has got already freezed. Maybe before it gets freezed, we may even update the balance. <clears throat> Something is possible. So it's just a glimpse of the price limits, or the promotional limits actually. Fine. You go through the advanced pricing documents, it will not tell you a lot of variance to it. So many companies are offering these promotions with the list limits or the early bird discounts in a different, different manner. So it will now give you a lot of things on the advanced pricing. So this completes promotional limits. <clears throat> Next is pricing attribute management. 
this is a very important topic and then what happens there are plenty of uh, uh, what happens the usages for this no pricing attribute management engineering so for example here what happens this example which has been given on your advanced pricing documentation no on the implementation guide the same example i have taken it actually so we are now selling a second hand car fine so for which what happens there is a constant price of 5000 and then divided by car age so if the car is now 1 year old you will not divide it by 1 if it is now 2 years old you will not divide by 2 likewise what happens will be dividing it fine and then if it is uh, more than what happens uh, 5 years old we cannot sell it we can only get peri chambaram fine there is a fruit there fine which only can really so what happens we will not limit it but the maximum is only 5 years so the divisibility factor is by age now fine what is and then the car model is getting multiplied If it is going to be a standard car, what happens? We'll be having a multiplication factor of one. If it is going to be a deluxe car, what happens? We'll be having a multiplication factor of one point five. If it is a AC car, what happens? We'll be having a multiplication factor of two to the five thousand. So it is a three-step formula which we have done. But what happens? There are say, cases where you'll be having even twenty steps. Now, basically, for example, what happens if you go to the glass industry? When you want to buy a glass, what happens? It'll know you'll now find there is a basic price of a glass, and then it'll be multiplied by length. And then it will not multiply by length in what happens in centimeters, and then width by centimeters, and then what happens the depth or the height in millimeters. Fine. So length into depth into height, what happens? Uh, what happens will be the price of the glass actually. Fine. Some of them will be in centimeters, some of them in millimeters. So you should not put what happens the units of measures over there, but only the figures over there. So what happens the total volume of what happens it it basically based upon the volume actually volume. Uh, not exactly the volume, but what happens? There is a convention on this, on which what happens? The glass pieces will be basically priced. Similarly, there are so many items where what happens? The formulas are used for calculation of the price. So this is where the pricing attributes come into picture. So we are going to see one such thing on this now. So we now have what happens? One standard cost over here, and then what happens? The car age and then the car model. So there are three car models for which what happens? This exercise has been defined over here now. I will go there, and that method of implementation has got eleven step implementation now. Is eleven step implementation? We will not do one by one now. I will go there. So first one, what happens? We have to create the value sets now. Let me create a value set now. I am going to have two value sets: one for the car age and then one for the car option. Go there. Take copy of it now. No, take copy of it. You will not go to sysadmin now. Fine. When you want to do this now, what happens? We have to go to sysadmin now. Close it now. We have to go to sysadmin. Such responsible system administrator. No? System administrator here. What happens? You go to application validation sets the navigation. Application validation sets the navigation. In which what happens? We will not create the value system. Otherwise, what happens? We will be having this navigation every responsibility. I don't know where exactly it is available in the order management. So you will be available. It will be available now. When you go to the application validation sets the navigation. Double click on it. And then I will not paste it over. I will not put the description also. And then here what happens? The format type is numbers only. The format type is what numbers only. So I will not put as a number. If I go there, I will now have a maximum field of three. And then what happens? The position is one now. And the decimal position is one now. So three. And then a decimal position of one. So what happens? We'll have decimal one. Is fine. Go there. And then here what happens? I'm going to say uh, what happens? The minimum value and maximum value. I'm going to give it now. Fine. Go there. The minimum value is one point zero. And then the maximum value is what five point zero. If the value, the age of the car is more than five, what happens? It will not be weighed, and then it will be sold. Not as the price is basically fine, so it will not be eligible for a sale. So what happens? From five thousand, we are going to divide this now. Fine, we will not divide, and then obtain this price. This is the second factor of a formula now. So the first factor of a formula is five thousand. The second factor is this one, and then here what happens? You make the validation type as none. That means what? It is a free hand entry now. Validation type is none. So you can enter whatever values you want. Right. Validation type is known. So by which what happens? The value set is now created. Find out this commit. The first value set is now created. We'll now create the second value set. Find out the control down arrow. We'll now get the second value set. Find out the second value set is this one. Find it's called car options value set two. Find take a copy of it. I put zero one over here. Find made it. Forgotten to make a change. So zero one I have put it. So let me make it. Here what happens? Sorry. What happens? So here, what happens? What does? So uh, you go there and then see this now. Microsoft has stopped working. <clears throat> you go there and then what now? Pricing attribute management. So here, you have this now. Go down. The second one is a core option too. It is a character. Ten sizes in the individual. You go there. So it's a character. And the size is ten now. 
and then it is independent. The second one. So we can have a maximum of 10 characters over there. One was colorless So it is not done. So we have got two value sets created for this exercise. For this exercise, one of them we have created the car age value set, which has got a limitation on the values of what to up to five. And then the car option value set, what happens? It is not having a 10 character one, it is independent. Now, what happens? You go there, I will not give the values for the car option. Car age is basically none, and so what happens? It won't be having value sets. Whereas car options will be having a value set. So what happens? Go to application validation values is the navigation which what happens? I know. Give three values of standard car, deluxe car, and then AC car. Fine. Standard deluxe and AC car for the values. I will not close this one. Fine. It will be safe. Go there, close it. And then go to the navigation. Application validation values is the navigation which what happens? I know going to give values. Fine. Go there. Values. <coughs> Open up those values now. Is the value set. I will not paste the value set over here and then give a tab on which what happens. I'm going to find click on find. So, here what happens? I'll not give three values. No point. It is standard STD standard and then DLX and then EAC and comment. So, we are not given three such values now standard car, a DLX car, and then an AC car. So, here what happens since it is independent, what happens? It will not pick up values only from the value sets which you have created. So, step number two is now complete. Now what happens? We go to the attribute management. You go to the setup and attribute management. Fine. We are going to create the attributes now. Fine. Go there. So go to setup and attribute management. Close it now. And remember, it has to be via pricing manager global responsibility. And go there. It has to be via pricing manager global responsibility. So switch back to our responsibility of order management. And then go to the pricing manager global. Fine. Go to the pricing manager global. And go. For attribute management, for formulas, what happens? We have to go via this navigation. And then here, what happens? You go to the setups. And then here, what happens? You go to the attribute management. So set up attribute management. I double click on it. And then here, what happens? You go to context and attributes. The navigation. Set up attribute management and then context and attributes. The navigation. So I go there. So here, what happens? In the pricing manager responsibility. And then we'll now create a car context. Now. Fine. We are now going to create a car context. Take all which I am not putting zero one now for this example. So go to the navigation pricing manager, set up attributes, context, and attributes. Fine, double click on it. Beginning it now. Fine, type. So if you drop down the right, there are two types. One is a qualifier context is also available. Fine, qualifier also can do it, but we are using it for the pricing context over there. And then the code. What happens? I am not going to paste this code. Fine. Zero one car context level. So I will not take a copy of it now. And then let me paste the code. <clears throat> the name also I am going to put it now. Fine. Same thing. Paste it. And the description also I'm going to put the same thing. And everything is same. So this is a context now. Fine, is a car context. And then click on the attributes. So here, what happens? I'm going to create two attributes for this context now. Fine. One is what car age, and then one is car option. Fine. I'm going to say car age. The one. So because we are having three, uh, what happens? The elements for the formula now. One is five thousand as a constant. One is the age, and then one is the car option. So this is now going to have this one. Take a copy of it now. Car age as a context now. And, go there. and then paste it on the code. Now. Paste the code. You tap. You also see it. You go there. Always, whatever it asks for a precedence, you give 220 as a standard precedence. 220 is a standard precedence. You can give it now. It's for advanced pricing. Go for that. And the column map, you always map the first column so that what happens. Retrieval is basically fast. It is a pricing attribute. It is not a normal attribute, remember. It's a pricing attribute. Fine. Entry. So, column map is pricing attribute. Fine. Here, what happens. It is a car age. And so, what happens? You have to use the appropriate values. Fine, value set is what car age. So go there, zero, 01, and then give a dish. Fine, you can choose the car age. So choose the car age value set. So we have chosen it. Fine, there are so many other modifications that are again what happens. You go through the advanced building government. Now give you plenty of information on each and every field. And go there. I'm now giving only on skeleton way of doing it now. Go to the second one, second context, second attributes. I'm going to make it now. And get on the second attributes. You go there. And then here, what happens? The car options. Take copy of it now. Go there. Take copy of the car option. <clears throat> Paste it over here now. And go there. It's a car option now. And go there. Again, precedence is 220. And then give it that. And then here again, what happens? It's a pricing attribute one. Successive numbers you always give. So that what happens? The retrieval will become fast now. The purpose is one more there. Here, what happens? Is there. Zero one, and then give it that. And then I'll open the car option here. And that is it. Fine. So we are now associating the respective value sets for the rest of the attributes. So context and attributes are now created. And context and attributes are created. So it's now complete. So context and attributes are created now. 
<coughs> now what happens the system will be running them for every attribute what happens it'll now run two two concurrence now so for the for a contest it has got two attributes so for two attributes what happens it'll be running now right? so it is now end up in a error i don't know why it's so god it's not end up in a error now i will use the log what is the problem oh bhai oh, so much of a big error i can't understand this one. You has failed to check log file. This thing is in bad. You don't see any output is there on the what's called here. View output now has been detected in so and so. Failed to check log file. Ah, I couldn't understand this. Okay, well, now see whether it works or not. Fine. Normally, what happens? It should not fail actually. Right? It should not fail. So the first concurrent has no pass, but the second concurrent is not failing actually. I don't know why so, but it should not fail actually. And there may be some mistakes. I'm not sure about it. So the context and then the attributes are now created. The context and attributes are created. Step number three is complete. Now we go to the step number four. In the step number four, what happens? I am now going to what happens? Go there, and then link it to order management. It's called placing attribute, attribute linking and mapping. So whatever context and attributes I have created, I am going to link it and map it to our PTE you now. I am going to link it to our PTE. My PTE is order fulfillment. My placing transaction entity is order fulfillment. So my PTE of a uh, order fulfillment, I am going to do it. So the orders. You go to this navigation setup attributes, attribute linking and mapping. So whatever attributes we have created, we are going to link it and map it to our PTE now and go there. So close it now, and then this is the navigation now. attribute linking and mapping. So uh, pricing manager set up attribute management, attribute linking and mapping is the navigation and double click on it. And then it right so the pricing transaction entity is what drop down and then choose order management. Order fulfillment is the one, the one. So context type is what we go there and then choose the pricing context. So we have three different things that are available here. Fine, you choose the pricing context over here. And then here, what happens? I will not see. What happens here? Zero one car context will be available there, but it is not it. Fine, it is not that. It is not it assigned or not it assigned to a PT. No. Assigned to PT is not coming. Fine, we had assigned there. Fine. This is called what happens? Linking and mapping. So once when you perform a linking and mapping, the tick mark will come automatically. We cannot put a tick mark for this. The tick mark will be coming automatically. So go there and then we'll now click on the link attributes. So click on the link attributes and then we are going to link it. Now. So click on the link attribute. Link attribute and then make a link. And click on the link attributes. Choose yours now or your core context. Click on the link attributes and then here we are going to link it. And go there. Brown arrow. <clears throat> and then here what happens? This is the first one is what car age. Choose the car age over here now. Go there. Level is both basically. We can retrieve it at both the levels basically. So either line level or order level or both. Fine. Order header as well as order line sourcing. So sourcing can be done for both for the header and level level. And go there. Attribute mapping method now. How are you going to map it now? Fine. User entered now. Go there. there are plenty of methods that are available here. So user entered is the one where what happens? It will be uh, attribute sourced while pricing an order. Right. This is the one chain right. user entered is what? When you are pricing an order, order will be sourced. Right. User entered. And go there. And then choose the next one now. And what is go there? Make it as both now. And then here again, user entered. Choose the user entered and go there and then save it. By this, what happens? The linking and mapping takes place. Now. The attribute which has been created, cut less coming. So it gets linked and mapped. And so what happens? Uh, if you close this and then see a tick mark will be coming automatically. So attribute has been linked and mapped. So step number four is complete. That is for linking and mapping. It has been linked to our PT, our pricing transaction entity of order fulfillment has been linked. And then for a context type of pricing context. So we done it. So we go for step number five. Now we are going to create a formula. So pricing formulas. Is going to be created. This is the navigation now. Fine. Pricing formulas, formulas are the navigation which what happens will be creating a formula now. Fine. <coughs> go there. So close it now. And now you go on the go to the navigation now. Fine. Go there. Go to the pricing manager. And then go down. You go to the pricing formulas. And then here go to the formula setup. So pricing formulas and then pricing formula setup in the navigation now. Fine. Go there. This is the navigation. Go to the formula setup. So here I'm going to give a name now. Fine. Uh, since I'm using zero one, I want to say zero one underscore car underscore formula. And go there, and then take a copy of it now. Put the description. So it is going to have three elements now. Fine. 
point is good have three elements and go there it is first line divided by second line into the into third line and what i'm going to do right? go there line number 1 fine and the step number 1 rather step number 1 divided by step number 2 multiplied by step number 3 fine this is step number specifically and step number is so i'm putting the formula as this one right? so step number 1 divided by step number 2 step number 3 like this so the first number first step will be a numeric constant i'm going to put as numeric constant now i'm clicking on the formula type and go there so it is a new formula expression please run the concurrent build the formula package fine we have to build it now fine for us so when you build it what happens it will be available fine go there i am not building it i will not do it now fine as a node is coming as a matter of fine go there and then here the formula type drop it down and then make it as what as a numeric constant now fine i am now using a numeric constant so go there i will not say the component value is now 5 5000 now and then this is step number 1 of the formula so the formula will be step number 1 divided by step number 2 multiplied by step number 3 go there next is what the car context car age and what is the point go there pricing attribute is the one point go there so here the formula type is not numeric constant it is now pricing attribute so here what happens whichever is now having what happens independent or dependent only will be coming if uh, so you, what happens if a list of values if your what happens your uh, value set is now having a none it will not appear at all fine on the pricing attribute you know, okay and then here if it drop down 0 1 then give it a tab what happens you look at the car context in the car context if you go 0 1 or if you give a control l you will not have only the car age but the car option will not come because whatever there is not having what none as a value so there is number 2 fine car context when car age so car age is no uh, sorry the pricing attributes will not come only for the none one fine only if it is a none it will be correct there is step number 2 so you have to enter manually the age that will be divided so only which is none i am sorry i made a mistake there so whatever is none only will be a pricing attribute if it is a independent or dependent it cannot be a pricing attribute I cannot do raising it. So I made a mistake there. Go there. Next is what? If it is going to be independent or dependent, what happens? We will now have a factor list as a formula type. So the formula type will be a factor list for independent and dependent. I go there, drop it down, and then here I will use the factor list. I go there, factor list, and then go there. Here, what happens? There is no thing. You have to create a factor list now. It is what zero one underscore f l one, and then give a tab. So normally, what happens? People don't search the list of values, but it is not so. Here, what happens? We have to write the value over here. Factor list one, and then give a tab, and that becomes what happens. It now says this is not existing. Shall I create a new one now? Why do the way to create a new one? Why a new factor list will be created? Continue. Fine. Click on OK. So you write a factor list, and then give a tab. The system will be creating a new factor list. Fine. Click on OK. Go there. That is step number three. So this is a factor list now. Click on the factors now, and I am going to give the factors only now. So click on the factors. I will be giving the factors. Go there. I mean, see this now. Now here, what happens? It is a car context, and then the basic pricing attribute is car option. The attribute context is car context, and you go there. Zero one, and then you give a tap, and then you give zero one, and then you give a tap. So it's now coming as a car option. Now. Go there. Operator. We have got multiple operators over here now. It is not equal to or between. Fine, equal to between becoming only when we are having a numeric value. And go there. What is the value? Some standard now. STD. Fine. STD is a one. Go. Ah, uh, you can even choose it from the list of values. And go there. You can even choose it from the list of values. We'll drop it on. Not coming. Okay. Value from adjustment factor. I will not say it's one point zero. Right. One point zero. And core option. <clears throat> so in the core option, what happens? I know given the value is zero. It has to come in the list of values. I know it's not coming. Control here. Oh, God, it's not coming. Right. Go there. So the one. You know given. Now what happens? You go there. I will not give the next one is what deluxe is one point five and then AZ is two. Fine. I'm going to give three such adjustment factors now. Go no there. It has to come in the list of values actually. I don't know why it does not come. Shift F five. Go there. Shift F five. Go there. Operator is also shift F five. Go there. And here what I was standard deluxe deluxe. I'm going to give it up. And then there's one point five now. Fine down arrow. <clears throat> shift F five. Shift F five. And go there. Shift F five. And then there's AZ now. Go there. If it is AC car, you have to multiply by two. Standard deluxe and AC, but it has to come with the list of values. But list of values is not working here. I don't know it's. No, remove the AC and click L V. Okay. Control L. Yeah. Click on this now. Yes. Very fantastic. How come? <laughs> If you are not putting anything, it is not coming. Okay, good. <clears throat> Control L. Remove this now. Deluxe. Because it has to come from what happens there. We have a list of values. Okay. Just to me. Okay. So 
So it's not done. Then click on OK. So by which what happened? The factors are being specified. And then give us save. Now, what happens whenever you're doing it? What happens? You have to build it now. Fine. The package has to be built now. Is one divided by two to three. So you go there. Go the tools and then go to build formula package. So we're building it. What happens? You need basically you find tools build formula package. You're doing. So the build formula has been generated successfully. Fine. So only when it generates, it will be usable on a price list. Building building the formula package is the must know. Apart from that, what happens? You have to run one more concurrent for optimizing it now. Fine. Pricing percentage, ATP percentage. Fine. I forgot the concurrent now. Pricing attribute something like that. Oh God. One second. This is not available here. Fine. One concurrent has to be done now. Fine. So if you don't do we have to run one more concurrent actually. <clears throat> so the formula is not ready. Fine. Go there close the building now. Let me otherwise switch responsibility to pricing, Oracle pricing manager global now. If the particular concurrent will be available here, but all here, all time. Percentage, pricing percentage, attribute or something like that. Pricing attribute manager build. Otherwise, it's a build, I think, right? B U I L D build. Yeah, build attribute mapping rules. Yes. This has to be run at least once. So once when you run it, then what happens? It will be working very efficiently. No? Fine. Whenever you do the pricing attribute management, what happens? You run the build attribute mapping rules. You introduce this into your responsibility. Fine. Click on stop it now. I'm now working on the global pricing. You go there, click on find now. So it has to run once. So you have to run once at least. Fine. Once run it, then what happens? It will be optimizing the performance of your system as such. The system performance gets optimized because of this. So the formula is now done. The formula is now that fine. Run it. Close it. Go there to do that. Now I will not create an item called what zero one second car. So let us now go and create an item now. Fine. Go there. Switch responsibility to your order management responsibility. And then here we will not create an item. Fine. Go there. Go to inventory items master items. So let me create an item now for M and R. Go there. Paste it over here now. Fine. No operate item, operate item, purchase interpret and operate. So here what happens? I'm not going to give any list price basically because we're not going to do anything now. And then here I'm not done. And then let me assign it to the R. <coughs> so we are all working on uh, what uh, okay in order management I tried. Okay. Uh, I know uh, I will now work on the missions one itself in the M1 and the M1. So M1 is now using what? Your yeah, prices of corporate top line. If you go there, go to the orders and returns, and then go to the sales orders. And if you put 1143 over here now, 1143, if you go there, the price list is corporate now. Fine. On the corporate prices, you see the what happens here. Price now. And go there, close it now. Discard it. And then here, what happens? You go there. I will not introduce it now. You go there, go to the price list now. Fine. Enterprises is not available here. You go to the advanced pricing, purchasing. And then here, go to the advanced pricing. And then go down and then go to the price list and then go to the price list setup. Prices setup, you're going to go there. And then let me query the corporate now. Corporate and go to the now. Zero on P percentage inquiry now. Corporate here, what about the table is going to down and then with item and then get it as item number. Item number and then here, what about the product value is what zero one percentage when you tap. The second hand car go there, and then here what happens? I'm not going to give any price at all. This price I will not give it. Now. Instead, what happens? I will know what happens. Application method is unit price. If you go there, list price I'm going to. I will not put on dynamic formula. Fine. If you put dynamic formula. So from the formula, what happens? The price will be coming automatically. If it is on a dynamic formula, every time it will now rebuild the formula. Fine. Whenever the pricing engine is initiated, whenever the pricing event takes place. What happens? The formula gets rebuilt and then it will be applied upon. Because you might have made some changes to the formula, but what happens uh, uh, upon uh, uh, pricing event, what happens? It will rebuild it and then what happens? It will apply. But government companies, what happens if there is a change in the formula, they will not rebuild it. Fine. Once in three months only, they will not rebuild it manually. So in this case, what happens? They will not put it on the static formula. So if they put on static formula, whatever changes which are made on this place, what happens? It will not be reflected to the customer at all. So government companies normally use static formula. And then once in three months, they will now rebuild it. Go to tools and then rebuild. Otherwise, if you put on a dynamic formula, 
every time whenever a pricing event takes place what happens it will be rebuilt actually the core formula so people will be keep on modifying the core formula and some uh, factors or something else they will not modify it. and then the recent changes will be reflecting on the sales order form it will automatically rebuild it static formula no rebuild will happen whatever is available there so otherwise you manually rebuild it the changes will not be reflected to the customer actually so they keep it in the once in three months or once in six months what happens they will not rebuild it so this is the one you close it now and not have so go there and then let us now open up a sales order now fine go there go to the orders and return and then go to the sales order <coughs> I will not put the customer of 11 for three. And I give it a hand. And then go to the lines feature. I will not populate my car over here. No point. It is zero one percentage. And I give it a hand. The car go there. I will not go for sale. Let's say 10 quantities. And give it a hand. So the moment I give it a hand, it now says the error in the formula. No point. Step number one, 5,000 is there. But step number two, two and three are not done basically. So we have to populate the step number two and three. Then only what happens? The price will be coming now, right? Because it's using a formula. So step number one is 5,000. Step number two is car age. Step number three is car option. So these two factors have to be put. Then only what happens? The price can be obtained. Then click on OK now. So you go there, go to the pricing, and then you click on this. What happens? The DF of icon. No? Fine. There's a, a, a square bracket there. If you click on the DF of icon, what happens? It'll be showing you this one. I have to put the price context. Right? I will not put the context over here, and then automatically there's no opening up. So car age. If you put six, what happens? If you tap, what happens? No, say cheapo. I will not accept it. So it has to be between a value of 1.0 and 5.0 only because we are given a limitation on this now. I go there. I will not give what I was doing, one here. And then here, what I was doing, no say standard car. Standard car. So it is divided by one, multiplied by one. That is the formula which I go to. 5000, what happens? It divided by one and then multiplied by one. Fine. SPD has got a form factor of one. And then here, what happens? You go to the main region. And then now, what happens if you give a tab? Fine. No given. So what happens if you give a tab? It has to come now. Or otherwise, what happens? Let me give a save now. Line type is there, all the things are there. Fine, go there. And then give a commit now. <clears throat> One commit, whatever. The unit price has to cover 5,000. <coughs> no commit. <laughs> now I go there and then modify the formula. Now go there. I will now make the car ages 2 now. Fine, go there. And then click on OK now. Fine, go there. And then I will now give a commit now. Fine, committing is basically, saving is basically triggering a pricing event. So the price is there on 2,000. You go to the pricing and then here, whatever. You go there. And then make a change to 4 now. Go there, go to the four, and click on OK, and then go there and then commit. Upon committing, the pricing event takes place and the price is not. So we can even have the remaining ones. Fine, go there. I will not make it as what? Not a standard car. I will not make it as a AC car. And multiplication is two. Now. So here, what happens? I will not make it as a standard car. Now. And go there. So is the multiplication is not two. What happens? No, it's not. What happens? 5000 divided by one multiplied by two. Now. Go there, go to the main, and then save it. What happens? The price will be coming as a two. So, in fact, what happens in reality, you'll be having what happens more than 10 factors also available on a factor form on the formula. So, a yeah, very complex, like what happens, metallurgical coke. The steel industry is using metallurgical coke. For which what happens, there are 20 factors which affect the price. So, if you go there, you'll be finding so many factors. So, in which what happens, the price can be exactly obtained by filling up all the factors. So, it's a, it's a very costliest material in the steel manufacturing, the metallurgical coke. Which is normally in our company, what happens? We use to import it from Australia. And so, what happens? The price depends upon all the factors. This completes pricing attribute management, actually. Go there and then do all these things. If you make a change to a static now, then if you change the formula, what happens? The changes will not affect. This completes our discussions on advanced pricing now. Any doubts in this one? Go there. <clears throat> this file I have to send it to you. I have, I have not attached it actually. It was not there. So I will know. If it is not atta attached, if I, if I forget it, what happens? So please remind me in the evening. And then in the evening, by evening, what happens? You're not getting the what happens your, your thing. You, one of you, please send a mail to me. I will know recent again because I heard that what happens? Your first file, order management first is also not got. You only got number two. Right. Number one also, I'm sending it to today. One number one and number three, I'm not sending it. Go there and now, what happens? Go there, you go to QC, <coughs> frame docs, and I'll open up the agenda. So, we are now completing the basic pricing as well as advanced pricing. Right. Now, we go into order entry. So, we are going to begin order entry. 
the pricing part is now complete. So the first one is a defaulting rule. So the defaulting rule is the one. So we are now going to begin our order entry with the defaulting rule. If I go there, close it. Go there. Let me switch to my responsibility. C1 now. Yeah. No, no, uh, I'm not sure whether the secondary price list is covered. I mean, yeah, yeah. Not secondary sure. prices I have not told actually. Fine, I'll tell you what exactly is not fine. Go to the enterprise list. I will not tell you something on this. No, fine. See, one person has not told it. Fine. First of all, what happens? The system will not try to find because price list will now give only one best line to the calling application. Fine. So if it is not available on this, what happens? We will now go to the secondary price list and then we can mention something also. Fine. CORP and then person is coming there. So if you mentioned mention it, if the item is not available on the primary price list, what happens? It will now go to the secondary price list and then pick up the price list. And then this also will be having a secondary price list. Like this, what happens? You can even have a cascading effect. Right? So it will now search everywhere. So you can even put one secondary price list over here. And then what happens? If the item is not available on this one, because sales order will be having a price list. So sales order's price list, what happens? It will now try to pick up the item on that. And then if the item number is not available, it will now go to the secondary price list. And then what happens from there, it will now search. And then it's also available, it's secondary price list. Like that, what happens, it will now keep on cascading and then searching everywhere. And then finally, what happens, it will now obtain the price list. There is the only application here. Now. What is? <clears throat> a question here, actually. So before it can search the secondary price list, right? So uh, let us say in this scenario, so I have a price list one, mm -hmm. which has two secondary price lists. Okay. Secondary price with one yes, precedence one forty, yeah, another yeah. one precedence one thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it will go with the lowest precedence. So the one thirty secondary price list, it will try to identify the item. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. If it is not there, yeah. it will go to one forty over here, or yeah. it will go to the secondary price list of this one, and again it will search if it is not available, then only it goes here. I think it will now go to so one forty one. And if it is not available, then what happens? It will go to the uh, secondary prices of that particular one. That is what I feel. I am not sure about it again. We have not tested it to the text index. Okay. I have not tested it to the text index. Because there are two lists there. Fine. It has to identify from what happens, what are the prices. Otherwise, what happens? It has to go to the next secondary prices and then check it. If it is not available, then what happens? Again, it will now go back further level. Fine. The next levels. In this level, it will now make a check of everything. And then the next levels, it will now go only when this level fails actually. That is what I feel. Mm. I'm not sure about it. Again, what happens? It will be test actually. Okay. Similarly, for the qualifiers also. The qualifier is not even coming. CORP. So let me close it now. I know it's one of the qualifiers actually. Yeah. This is now whether this list is applicable or not, we can even give a qualifier. But the entire list is going to be applicable or not. So we can even have a qualifier. So by qualifier context, what happens? We can now say it can be for a specific customer also. Customer, customer, and then here customer name, <coughs> customer percentage, name percentage, and then give that. And then we will say C1 percentage, and then give a qualifier. So once again, customer value is for. C1 and your tab. What is <clears throat> so this entire list is applicable only for the qualifiers mentioned over here. So we can even add some list of customers if you want. Otherwise, what happens that will be applicable for everything. So go there, close it. Now we will now begin our order entry now. Next step is what order entry. Well, you know, go for the defaulting rules. The defaulting rules. So the first activity is defaulting rule and go there. And now go there and say now when I open up a sales order, I open up a sales order. The moment I open my customer over here now, the customer is now giving me a customer PO. So his customer PO is what? C1 underscore cust underscore 123. So his customer PO is like this. But what happens? We can at least default up to this level. C1 cust cust underscore, we can now default up to this level. So if you want to default up this level, let me have one more customer also created. Now. I am not created one more customer. Let me create a customer again. And one more customer will be created. Go to customer standard. And then let us now create one more customer over here. C1 cust2. <coughs> so we will have two customers for this now. <coughs> for this exercise. I click on create now. Let me create one page. So 
I'm going to get one more customer. Now. Cust2. It is a C1 underscore Cust2. Go there. And then here I'm going to say what happens. Address is what? I'm going to say Madras works. Go down. And then here, what happens? No click on what? Add to open click on plus. When you click on the plus, for example, nothing will happen. Second time only it will happen. Open click on plus now. Go down. And then add this what that's a ship to now. Only these two are the business purposes which you can do from this place. Then click on what apply. <clears throat> so they are applying it now. So upon applying it, what happens? So the Madras works site will be coming on the bottom now for the customer. So for which what happens? The most specific the famous file <clears> or <throat> the uh, site level. So the site is now getting created now. C1 cust2 is the supplier, is the customer now. So we are using the profile class as default. And then what happens is the address line number one is a, what is a, is a representable one as far as this thing is concerned. And then what happens is you're creating it. So once when you apply, what happens is it will be coming in the bottom as a Madras box. And then this, I'm going to use it. I'm not and go there. The Madras box is compiled. Click on the radius icon now. Click on the radius icon of this now. So click on the radius icon of this. <clears throat> and then here, what happens is you go to the business purposes of it now. Click on the business purposes. And then here, what happens? I move the radio button to shift to and then click on the radius now. So click on the radius of this now. <clears throat> and then payment terms this is a 2 by 10. And this is net 30. Salesperson to begin with, what happens? There will be no sales credit. Order type is what? Transaction type is what? Percentage TT3 percentage. Or terms of the transaction date is applicable now. I go there, give a tab now. So it's one. Price this is C1, and then give a tab. I will now put this one. Advanced price is also coming fine. Choose the prices of this now. Go there. Warehouse is C1, and then give a tab. So C1 to the child org, I have to choose it now. I have to show it now. So these are five informations we are going to provide it on this one. The payment terms, the salesperson, the order transaction date prices, and the arrows. They will now get defaulted onto the customer. Now save and go there. Now let us now go on and create a defaulting rule for both the customers. So what happens in this place, if you open up the sales order, if you put C1 and then give a tab, if you put the first customer, what happens, it has to come as what? The customer PO has to come on C1 underscore, cust underscore, a running number. The running number only has yes to enter. Fine, the remaining should automatically default. That is what I do. And go there. So I'll now uh, set up the defaulting rules for this. And close it now. The very uh, big one because what happens when you are entering a lot of sales orders, when, when it defaults, it will now fetch things very fast. Now. You go there, go to setups, and then go to rules, and then go to defaulting. And then here, what happens if you give a control F1? What happens? The first one is coming, <coughs> which is line payment. If you give a down arrow, if you give a down arrow on this one, you will not get order header. You will not get order header. So in this, what happens, I have to go on and query a customer PO attribute now. Fine. In the next one, down arrow order header is there. Click on the attribute and then go to query mode. Here, what happens is a percentage, capital P, capital O, percentage, and then query. No, custom PO, I'm going to query. And then here, what happens, I will now create a template now. Two templates I'm going to create. Fine. Two templates I'm going to create. Fine. Click on the defaulting condition template. So for this particular field, what happens, I will now click on the create defaulting templates. Here, what happens, control down arrow. I will not say it's a C1 underscore cust1 template. The template name is this one. I go there. I will not say what happens. Sir. Cust P O defaulting. I put it and go there. I will not click on validation rules. Validation rules is one now. Attribute is what? I go there. I will not put what customer. Customer equal to. And then here it is a C1. And then what happens is go and then you tap. Choose the customer one. So, if the sales order is going to have this as a customer, what happens? This rule will now become true. Now. Your template will now become either true or false based upon the validation rules. And then we will now create one more thing. Go the control down arrow. It is C1 underscore cust2 is a one. I will now say it's a cust PO2 defaulting. Go there. I will now click on the validation rule for this one and go there. Is a customer 
and then equal to what happens c1 and merge with the customer 2 so what happens if the sales order is going to have customer 2 as the customer what happens this rule will become true so you only have to write the defaulting conditions in such a way that what happens not multiple rules are getting enabled say for example if the it is going to be a counter sales fine if the order transaction type is going to be counter sales then this template becomes true fine if the customer is going to be sterling mining fine this template will no longer so see all the defaults one fine in the negotiation phase what happens if the transaction phase is negotiation this template will no longer so different templates will now become true for different different conditionalities fine some of them will not have any conditionality at all fine that means what it is always true say for example here what happens you have one thing called always always do not have any conditionality always will always become true so create that many templates now what happens after having created all the templates we will now click on the defaulting box after query was what happens you click on the defaulting box so before you query it what happens defaulting condition templates are common for all the attributes so create all the defaulting condition templates and then afterwards query your attribute and click on the defaulting box here what happens always is there fine so it says what uh, if you have an agreement with the customer fine if you have an agreement with the customer the agreement customer po will default or otherwise whatever they no say fine if this is not going to work now fine go for 20 now fine go for 20 i will not say c1 and then give it up i will not say cost one if this template becomes on whatever they go there i will not put sequence number 1 and then drop down i will not say what happens i will not say a constant value i will not give a constant value so here i will not say c1 underscore cost one underscore the constant value will be one right if this template is not going to be there what happens this is the constant value i am going to make it now and this constant value will not come, come commit no say so it's now giving a note now fine accept the note doesn't matter right now accept the note and then what happens go there go to the 30th one and then here what happens i am going to say it is c1 and then you would have cost two and going to put it now if this template becomes uh, what happens active or other it becomes valid now fine go there i will not give a what a constant now in constant value i will not say it's a c1 underscore cost two underscore but this value will not default you get on okay and then this value is going to default on the sales order and go on and connect so if this template is now on what happens c1 underscore cost one underscore will be defaulting if this template is going to be on what happens this will be default so now we have written all the defaulting rules now now what happens we have to generate okay, go, there. go to tools and then go to generate so only when you generate what happens it will now become active now fine go to tools generate so what happens do this in the name so a concurrent program will be running for generating it now fine the defaulting generator has got completed now we go and then test it on the sales order if i go there i will not test it on the sales order it goes up now so you can test it on the sales order go to tools closer form is not available fine okay and open up the sales order now so the moment i put it fine c1 percentage and give it up the first customer that i put it what happens you can now see C1 underscore cost one underscore has got defaulted. <clears throat> now what he had read his customer view is now having a number running number by uh, three four two. That only he had read. The remaining has already defaulted. So he had read your writing will become minimal. So this is going to reduce the human errors also. The human errors will be reduced and then what happens? The speed up the entry will be very fast. You go there. I will not put the second customer over here. Now and go there. I will not put customer two over here. So the moment you put the customer to what happens, the customer view gets reported. So this is one such example of this one. This is one example of this. <clears throat> and close it. Discard it now. Go there. And then go to the window. And then here what happens? We go there. And then I will not remove it now. And go there. Go to setups. And then what happens? Go to setup rules. And then go to defaulting. And then control F1 go there. You give a dyno of fine. Let me have an order header now. So you query this now. Fine, go there. Go to query mode. Percentage PO percentage on the query. And then here you go to the default rules. Let me delete all this. So for deleting it, what happens? You have to keep it. First, keep your cursor on the defaulting source rules here, and then go to edit delete. Fine, go to edit delete. Fine, delete. And then what happens? Save. Delete and then save. A note will be coming. Afterwards, after having deleted the rules, what happens? You go to the defaulting conditions now. Fine, go there and then delete. So this would be the way of deleting now. I delete it and then give a commit. What happens? You can also get a note also. But what happens? The transaction complete message. Note in the transaction complete. This is the way. So this is also I want to delete. I keep a cursor on this place and then go to Alt E D and then commit. Accept it. And then keep a cursor on this place and then Alt E D and then commit. Accept it and then accept it. So this is the way you have to delete. And lower level first and then the higher level. 
So having deleted everything, what happens? You have to put rules on the internet. So tools generate, concurrent program is running now. You go there, close it. And now what happens if you go and then see this now? Go to the sales orders, nothing will default. So when you are all working on what happens, a common instance, what happens? Some of you experiment it and then remove it. So that what happens, others can also experiment it. And when you are completed experimenting on it, please remove it. Otherwise, what happens, there will be a clash. And then I don't know what will happen if so much of a clash is appearing. Now, another way of defaulting is what? The famous way. What happens? Whenever any customer asks for it, what happens? The requested date must be 48 hours after person. So let me introduce the requested date now. Find others. Find go there. I will not say credit card type. Let me hide this field now. Thank you. Go to the folder and then I will not hide the field now. Click on hide the field. And then here I will not introduce the requested date over here now. Find go there. Go to the folder and then show field now. So let me introduce the requested date. Find requested date I am going to do. So it automatically comes as a system date now. Find go there. And then let me save this folder now. Find folder save as now. So let me save the folder so that what happens? This uh, credit card type no more becoming only my requested date will be coming. I will not say Nana. <coughs> what happens? Head up. Head up. And then I open as a default now. If you make it as a public, it will be for all the people basically. And click on OK. So Nana header is the one. So if you close it and then open it up now, fine. Open up the sales order. You cannot see what happens. The Nana header is there. The others, what happens? We have the requested date. So is the order date 241.36. And then what happens? This is the system date actually. Now, the requested date is the date on which the customer has made it, right? So he wanted, in one of my uh, thing, what happens, uh, my student has done it. So he wants to shift it by 48 hours always. Whenever he asks for, the requested date gets shifted by 48 hours. So for which, what happens, we are going to write a defaulting rule now. We go to setups, and then go to rules, and then go to, what happens, security, and then non security, sorry. Setup rules defaulting. So you go to the navigation setup rules defaulting, in which what happens, I'm not going to write a defaulting rule, right? And then go and then query it and then give a down arrow. And then here the one. So let me query the requested date field now. And go there. Rec percentage and then query it now. Requested date field. <clears throat> so click on the defaulting rules now. Here what happens? It says always is there. System variable or system date is there. So let me disable it first of all. I don't want always to come in. Fine. Let me disable it and then save it now. The note is coming. The transaction is completed now. Whenever header level is coming, note and then the transaction is will be coming. And go there. And then I will not put this one. I'll make it as fourth now. I'll now put my template over here now. My template. If the customer is going to be there, whatever we go there. I will now put a sequence now here. Whatever sequence number is one. I will now say it's a system variable. The system variable. I choose the system variable. It is sysdate plus two. Sysdate plus two. And if you know uh, how to write PLSQL and all, whatever you can even write an expression of property. Sysdate plus two is the one. I go there. And then it is now saved. Go over there. Okay. And then save it. Come this coming. Defaulting rule is not done, and go there. And then go there to go to the tools and then generate. So I'm not generating it now, and go there. Now, what happens? You go there and then go to the window, and then go to the navigator. Let me open up a sales order. So the moment I put the customer, and let's say customer 2, I'm going to put it now. When I put the customer 2, what happens? The date order is 13th December 2, 43, 36. The others also requested date also will be coming as same thing. Not coming because what happens? My defaulting rule is coming. It is not written anything at all. And the always is now disabled actually. Since always is disabled, requested date is not coming. Now, if you go there and then put the customer over here now, fine. And then give it a tap. So the moment I put it, go to the other side. It is 13th December 243. Fine, go to the others. It is 15th December 243. Since always is disabled for the other customer, requested date is not coming. So you have to write it in the proper manner. What happens? The defaulting takes place perfectly as per your requirement. Fine. When you're writing it for one customer, what happens? Uh, we have to have the other customer also. Fine, you go there, close it now. Discard it and go there. And then here, what happens? Go there. So let me enable always also and see now. And then commit. Click on OK. Transactions complete. <coughs> let me build it. This is for all of the customers. This is for this customer now. Now both are enabled now. And go there. We'll see how it behaves now. I'm generating it. If there's a conflict, what happens? It will not work properly at all. Fine. You only have to take care of all the conflicts. So wait for the concurrent to complete now. You are running. It's not completed. Fine. Go there. Close it now. Now open up a sales order. So when I put the second customer over here now, fine. Go there. Second customer. Give it up. So others must get the system date is now coming. If you put the first customer, fine. C1 percentage one and give it up. First customer is not happy. Close it and now. Discard it now. Fine. Go to the sales orders. 
uh, don't put the first customer over here, no fight. See when possible, you can get that. You go to the other stuff, you go there. It is not defaulting because always is not defaulting. So once when it is defaulted, what happens? It is not triggering it. <clears throat> it is not triggering it. But what happens? We can even make it trigger also. Fine. I will not show you uh, the agreement now. Fine. The agreement. What happens? One field is going to trigger the other field now. Okay. It is not happening. So you have, must be doubly cautious in writing your what happens here defaulting rules. You must be doubly cautious in this. Go there. So let me go on then. What happens? Delete this rule now. And go there. Go to what happens? Edit, delete, RDD, and then save now. And then the higher level. What happens? Go there. RDD, and then commit. Note is coming, transaction is coming, and go there and then build it. Close so, when you are writing it, what happens? You must be doubly cautious. Now, what happens? We will now use double level of defaulting. Double level of defaulting. So, for the same customer item, for this item, what happens? I don't know how the second car is there. I don't have any item. I have a sale item actually. So, for which, what happens? I will now create what? I go to the inventory. And then, here, what happens? I go there. I go to uh, what happens? You know, uh, items and then you go to item relationships and rather cross references one second one second i have to go to the customer item fine let me get a customer item also. go there customer items customer items double on it so i'm not going to create a customer item for this now fine double on it i'm not creating a customer item c11 child org i'm creating it now c11 child org so here click on the new now and go there customer name is c1 person c1 customer and the customer item is a c1 I will not say is a what happens a cust underscore item right? is a cust item and then go there go to the code and then give the code now find the finish good and go there and then click on the cross references now fine he is calling it as a cust item and then it is now referencing cross reference here or whatever I will not say it's a C1 percentage is now referring the sales item as a rank one so our item is sales item that is his item is he is now calling it as a cust item and go there and come go there and close it to so we now define the customer item which is now referencing our internal item so here what happens you uh, when you put on the sales order we will be putting the customer item over here whereas our items description will come our items description is going to come customer item along with our description but what happens this item will not be represented in the sales order now in the oem and then the ar invoice also what happens whatever way he is calling that only will become and then we'll now go into an agreement now. Fine. Here, what happens? The price is now having a 10 now. So let us go there and then we'll now create a pricing agreement for this now. Fine. We'll go there. And then here, I'll now go to the pricing manager. And then here, what happens? We'll go to the agreement now. Fine. Go there. We'll now create an agreement for this. Go to the pricing agreements, the pricing manager. Fine. Double click on it. So let me create an agreement now. So agreement name is what? C1 underscore agree underscore name is the one I'm creating it now. I take copy. Customer is C1 percentage one. It's customer. And then the agreement type is a sales agreement, direct sales agreement, and then purchase order number. You will now say what happens C1 underscore cust underscore PO1. Now bring it now. So is a purchase order number you now giving it. And go to the pricing now and go there. Price list type, fine, drop it down and then choose the agreement price list. Fine, go there. Fine, agreement price list now. Fine, you order C1 underscore. Agree underscore PL1. I am now writing it's not a list of values. What happens? It will be creating it actually. And go there. Multi captains come and go to give it. And go there. Now, then. now, what happens if you go there and then try to populate the customer item? Over here. And customer item is what? It's C1. Cust item. And give it a tap. So, the customer is coming. So, go there. This is now representing this. So, this is the one. And then uh, you go further and then you will now give a special price for this. And this price. For this customer, I am going to give a value of what happens 6.7. And then click on the payment terms, and then you can even override the payment terms. You know, I go there. Then this is where you know, go there. Control it. Maybe normally, I will not say two net for this now. And then invoice two. Fine. It can be for this customer address. They have got only one address will be coming. And then there are so many other rules that we can set it up as for the AR now. So the agreement is now created now. So we have what happens C1 agree name is agreement. Now I'm going to default on this one. Right? So this agreement is now having a special pricing for this customer item. Right? For this cust item, if you don't put it, what happens? We have to have a price at six points. Right? Whereas for others, it will be ten dollars. For others, it will be ten dollars. So for this customer, what happens? It will be six points on the price. And go there. Let us now see the two level of disc de default cascading defaults. You know, so we go there. And then now what happens? It is not done. I will now go to setups and then go to rules and then go to defaulting. 
so you know create a two level defaulting color of button and then down arrow so here whatever they know say go to the agreement this is a field in which whatever i'm going to create the agreement whatever i'm going to give a default image click on the defaulting groups here whatever they know say if it is going to be what happens c1 custom fine go there click on it and then go there fine go there and then i will give a constant value you know and constant value click on it and then here whatever c1 and then you tap the agreement name is coming since there is an agreement, what happens? We have now created an agreement for this customer. What happens? The cost and value will be coming and go there. And then save it now. And click on the up arrow. And then you will save it. Right. Click on it and go there. And then build it now. And tools build. I'm generating it. So the concurrent is now getting generated now. Now, what happens? When you put the customer to, you cannot see the price as what? Go there. Reporting is not completed. And go there. I will now put, go to the sales orders. And then here, what happens? Let me introduce the what happens the agreement field also. You know, right? let me go there. Let me hide this field now. Go to the folder and then hide this field. Now. And then here, what happens? Let me introduce the agreement name. Fine, go there. Go to the folder and then show field. Fine, the agreement. I think I don't know. Do the one. I think agreement. I will go then put it in front words. I will now go to the folder and then save it now. Save the folder. So that field has been introduced in the header itself and go there, close it. So let me open up the sales order now, fine, double click on the sales order. And then here, what happened? The agreement is coming. So the moment I put the customer to, fine, C1 percentage 2, there is nothing to default over here now. Agreement is not defaulting. And so the prices is this now. <coughs> if you go to the line items, and then here, what happens? If you go and see C1 percentage, then give it a tab. What happens? Sale item is only coming, and go for 12 quantities and give it a tab. So the price is 10 is not coming. <coughs> okay, the discount is also getting up right. You go to the actions and then go to view, view discount, view actions. You know, see the promotional one discount is not getting up because it was the second customer. Now, <laughs> fine, we are now given number of orders is three now. Fine, for the next order, it will not be coming. So, so number of orders, fine, the total number of orders, two orders that has got saved, and then I see it's working actually. I thought that it did not work at all. Fine, for the second line, it is working actually. So, you're not getting a discount now. For the customer one, what I'm in the price will be 6.7. Now, orders. It goes there, we'll now go on and do the customer one. For the sales order. So the moment I put the second customer, the price this one is coming. Fine. C1 personally two, if you put it, what happens? The price is one is coming. But when you put the first customer, the agreement will be populated. The agreement will not trigger a price list as a different one. Agree name will be the price. Fine. It is a double level defaulting. C1 personally one will be that. You can see what happens. The agreement name is coming. This agreement name has triggered a change on the price list also. It is called a cascading. What happens? Changes. So this is the one. So what about the price is now what about C1 agree PL1 and not the C1 price list one now. So this agreement name, the, this is now, we are now made only a defaulting of this now, but this has automatically triggered a price list change. Right? The cascading effect has come. So if we go to the line now, here what happens if you put C1, so we can even order on anything now and go there. We can have the customer item also available or sale item is also available. So you will now populate the customer item over here now and go there. And then give it a tab of one quantity and then give it a tab. The 6.7 price will be coming over here now. And we cannot order our item at all. Fine. If a customer has got a customer item, we cannot order our item. And our item is not possible. Fine. Our item is not possible. If we go there, and then here, what happens? We go there too. What happens? It will be push because the price is not having any price. And on the agree PL1, we cannot provide any price for our item. Only for the customer items only we can provide item. Click on OK. You can now see this now. Fine. I'll close it and show it to you. On the agreement, fine. Click on discard. And then here, what happens? Go there. And then see on the what happens? You go to this place. You go to the what's called your uh, pricing agreements. And then let me query the agreement now. Fine. The C1 percentage and then query it now. And go there. If you query it, what happens? You can now see here we cannot populate our item at all. Fine. Our sale item cannot come. Fine. Give it up. Only the customer items can be given. So if we are entering into an agreement, what happens? A customer item definition is a must. Then only what happens? We can now create an agreement for the customer. So only for the customer items, what happens, we can do it. <clears throat> this completes the discussion on defaulting. It has got a plenty of defaulting actually. Fine. One more defaulting also will not tell you because what happens, that will now give you the complex level of defaulting. So for the next class, what happens, I will now show you one complex level of defaulting and then afterwards I will now show you this also. So let me delete this now. Fine. Go, there, go to edit and then go to delete now. I'm deleting it and then save it now. And go there. You go to edit and then go to delete now. And then commit. Click on OK and then click on S. Okay, now what happens? Go to tools generate. So what happens? It will never default at all. 
in order to find over there. Wait for the concurrent to complete now. I don't want the agreement to come up. I don't want this agreement to come up. Only for the testing purposes, I know created the agreement now. Otherwise, I would like to have the normal phrasing only come up. Close it. Close it. And then here, open up the sales order. I don't want the agreement to come up now. So defaulting is really very complex topic actually. I will know the next class. I will not show you one uh, complex way of defaulting. So agreement number is not coming. So that is not having a cascading change of the price structure. Is it clear? So defaulting will not show you a complex defaulting on the next class. So we'll now continue on the next class now. <clears throat> I hope that you are understanding everything. Order management is a very tough topic actually. It's a very tough topic. And then uh, you have to concentrate and then learn it. So we'll be having the next class, uh, Aishwarya. Uh, it will be on Monday or we can have it tomorrow also. Because we missed this place class actually because of the fire delay. We will let you know, Nana. So I'll discuss with Priya and I will update you before end of the day. Okay. Today, I'll be sending you both 01 as well as 03 also to you. If it is not reached by evening, I was reason that uh, reminded me, I will again send it. Because sometimes it is not reaching you actually. By for now, by, by default, what happens, we'll be having the next class on Monday. But if there is a change, you let me know and then accordingly we'll do it. Okay. By default, we'll be having the next class on Monday. Yeah. Thanks, Nana. Bye. Thank you.